Hi, Astro Liz's Lab. I'm Herb Baker. I recently retired from NASA after working there for about 42 years, and I'm a good example of how you can work for a space agency without having a STEM degree. Although I got to work with engineers, scientists, and astronauts every day, I had a business degree, and my main job was contract management. NASA spends most of its budget every year buying things like space vehicles, uh, space suits, engineering support, and lots of other supplies and services needed to support their missions and operate their space centers. So whenever NASA needed to acquire something, we usually, but not always, had to hold a competition between U.S. companies that could provide what we needed. And my office would request the proposals from industry, review and evaluate them, uh, pick the one we thought was best based on the evaluation criteria we had established, then negotiate the details of the uh, contract with the winning company, and write the contract, which were often over 100 pages. And after we ag had agreed on all the contract terms, we signed it and then managed the contract, making sure that the contractor was doing what they had promised to do. Some of the contracts I got to work on uh, early in my career were the uh, EMU contract, Extra Vehicular Mobility Unit, or spacesuit. This was about 1977, and we were designing and building new spacesuits for the space shuttle program, which would fly for the first time about uh, four years later in 1981. Then a couple of years later, around 1979, they moved me to the uh, orbiter uh, section. So I was actually literally on a team, I wasn't doing it by myself, of course, uh, uh, buying uh, managing the contract with Rockwell International to, to buy these space shuttle orbiter vehicles. There were separate contracts for the main engines and external tanks and solid rocket boosters, but my group was, was buying the shuttle orbiter vehicles uh, at a cost of about $2 billion each. Uh, one of the most exciting uh, contracts I got to work on, though, was in the mid-1980s, uh, I was working on a, a space station support contract and it turned out that the company that won the contract, uh, Grumman, uh, assigned, once, once they won, they assigned Fred Hayes, the Apollo 13 astronaut, to be the, uh, the, the manager of that effort. And so he and I uh, negotiated the contract, and uh, he signed it for Grumman, and I signed it for uh, NASA. Uh, so that was, a, that was a real highlight of, of my career, I think. And uh, then we, they flew us up to... Uh, Grumman headquarters in Bethpage, New York at one point to uh, pose for a, a photo for the, the company newsletter. So, so that's a really, really nice memory. <clears throat> Years later, I went back to the uh, shuttle program and managed the, what they call the shuttle operations contract with the United Space Alliance to process the space shuttles, mostly at the Kennedy Space Center. Then back to the space station program, working on the International Space Station contract for several years. Uh, one of the things I got to do there was help acquire the, the Super Guppy. Uh, it, we needed a, 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 some way to transport those large uh, modules that were being built around the country to the Kennedy Space Center to be launched on the space shuttle. And we didn't want to send them over, you know, by rail or, or boat or, or on the highways. And so we we bought the Super Guppy, which was large enough uh, to handle those big pieces of equipment to, to fly them to the Kennedy Space Center. I also spent a couple of years working on the contract with Lockheed to design and develop the Orion vehicle a few years after that. And during that time, around 2006, I worked on the team that awarded NASA's first agreement to SpaceX for commercial orbital transportation services, and that was the start of the work that SpaceX did to design and build their Falcon rockets and Dragon capsules that they're using today. And my next job was manager of the operations support office uh, at Johnson Space Center, which supported flight operations there. And that included support to the astronaut office, mission control, and aircraft operations, along with a few other organizations. And so we managed contracts providing engineering support and flight controllers for mission control, a contract to run the neutral buoyancy lab, the big pool for the astronauts train underwater for spacewalks, a contract to, to main, operate and maintain all of NASA's aircraft in Houston. That includes the Super Guppy that I mentioned earlier and the, the T-38 jets that they, uh, the astronauts fly. One of my last big jobs before I retired uh, was one of my favorites too. Uh, we needed a, a 
newer, better airplane to fly to Kazakhstan uh, to pick up our astronauts and return them home after they came home uh, on a Russian Soyuz uh, from the International Space Station. So they asked me to be what they call the source selection official, which meant I got to pick which airplane we would buy out of those that were competing. So the one I picked had been one of Nike's corporate jets. And uh, thank goodness, <laughs> it, it turned out to be a, a good airplane. I, I, I can tell you, I was, I was kind of worried about that one. I, I was surprised that they didn't want an astronaut picking the plane, but they insisted that I do it. So I do enjoy every time an astronaut flies home in that plane and lands safely here in Houston after one of their uh, trips home on a Soyuz vehicle. Uh, so today I spend most of my time volunteering for organizations that support STEM engagement, like the NASA Alumni League, I'm on the board of directors there, uh, the Astronaut Scholarship Foundation, uh, Space, Space Center Houston, and a few others. And so as far as advice, I would say go for it. Um, you know, Don't be afraid that you're not good enough or smart enough or can't do the job at, at any space. A space agency for any country. And, and, and one other thing that kind of goes along with that is uh, you, you've probably heard the phrase failure is not an option. That's one of uh, le uh, legendary flight director Gene Kranz's favorite sayings. Uh, and, and I suppose that's true if there are uh, three astronauts' lives at stake like there were uh, when that phrase came up in the Apollo 13 movie where he was one of the flight directors that saved their lives. But otherwise, in, in normal, everyday life, I think uh, failure is an option. It's almost a requirement. You know, the, the old saying about if you're not failing, you're not trying hard enough. And, and I'm a firm believer in that. One of my other favorite sayings is do at least one thing every day that scares you. Uh, because, you know, I just I, I, I think you miss out on too many things in life in, in many ways. And certainly that can apply to whatever job you have if, if you're uh, you know, af afraid to apply because you uh, don't think you're going to be accepted. So anyway, I hope that's helpful. I'll also post my social media links here, at least for Instagram and Twitter. I'm also on Facebook and LinkedIn and a couple of others uh, that I'm happy to join or connect with any of you on any of those uh, social media platforms. And thanks for inviting me, Astro Liz. I uh, enjoyed getting the opportunity to put this video together for you.